Hello and welcome back. In this lesson, we are going to talk specifically about Elastic Block Store, commonly referred to as EBS. We're going to touch on EBS definitions, IOPS, root versus additional volumes, and snapshots. So to get started, let's talk about the definition of EBS. A simplified definition is EBS is a storage volume for EC2 instances. So here I want you to think of it as a hard drive. For AWS's definition, Elastic Block Store provides block level storage volumes for use with EC2 instances. EBS volumes are highly available and reliable storage volumes that can be attached to any running instance that is in the same availability zone. EBS volumes that are attached to an instance are exposed as a storage volume that persists independently from the life of the instance. And we're going to touch on that point again in a few minutes. So before we move any further in talking about Elastic Block Store and how it's used, let's first talk about IOPS, because this is something that, although it's a bit maybe more of an advanced feature, it's something that I at least just want you to be aware of. So what are IOPS? So IOPS stands for Input Output Operations Per Second. A simplified definition of IOPS is the amount of data that can be written to or retrieved from an EBS volume per second. AWS defines IOPS as a unit of measure representing input output operations per second. The operations are measured in kibibits, and the underlying drive technology determines the maximum amount of data that a volume type counts as a single I.O. So I.O. size is capped at 256 kibibits for SSD volumes and 1,024 kibibits for HDDD volumes because SSD volumes handle small or random I.O. much more efficiently than HDD volumes. So what does this all mean? Basically, more IOPS means better volume performance, faster read-write speeds. What determines the amount of IOPS? Well, the largest contributing factor is the EBS volume size. So the larger the storage size in Gibibytes, the more IOPS the volume has. Okay, so now that we have some of the technical stuff out of the way, let's talk about root versus additional volumes. So let's be clear about this. Every EC2 instance must have a root volume, which may or may not be EBS. So EBS is not the only type of storage offered by Amazon Web Services for EC2 instances, but it is the most commonly used. So that's why we're only talking about this type here. Now in the EC2 console, you can go to Elastic Block Store and view your volumes by going right here under Elastic Block Store and clicking on Volumes. And here, if you want to, you can create a volume independent of an EC2 instance, or during the instance creation process, if you go in a few screens to Storage, this is where you will select the root volume for your EC2 instance. And by default, this is an EBS volume. So by default, EBS root volumes are set to be deleted when the instance is terminated. However, you can choose to have the EBS volume persist after termination. So one of the major benefits of EBS volumes versus older types of storage volumes that AWS used to use is that EBS volumes can persist past the lifespan of the EC2 instance. So if you see right here where it says delete on termination and that is checked, that means that when we terminate this instant, this EBS root volume will be deleted as well. But if I were to uncheck this, then I can terminate the instance and this EBS root volume would still be there in my account, which I could then attach to a different EC2 instance. Now, if I want to, I can also add an additional volume, an EBS volume, to my EC2 instance during the creation process of the EC2 instance, or I could always create an EBS volume anytime afterwards and attach it to the EC2 instance. So this means that we can swap EBS volumes between different EC2 instances by detaching it from one and attaching it to another. 
So if I were to create this EC2 instance and I have my root volume and then I have my additional EBS volume, just like I have here, I can then at some point in the future create a second EC2 instance, maybe just with a root volume, but I can then take this additional EBS volume, detach it from instance one and move it to instance two. So it's a really nice feature to be able to basically take hard drives and move them or swap them from one instance to another. And when you think about root versus additional volumes, what I want you to think about is if you have a computer at home, you probably have a hard drive that is built into the computer. So if you were to take that computer and throw it in the garbage or the computer were to break, then most likely you would also lose the root volume unless you were to actually open your computer up and take that hard drive out. So think about that the same way here with your root volume. This is the hard drive that is built into your computer and you have the option to either when you terminate or when you would throw out the instance, you would have the opportunity to open up the computer and actually pull that hard drive out and save it for later by unchecking this here. But if you keep it checked, that would be similar to you taking your computer right now and throwing it in the garbage and having the hard drive inside go with it. With the additional volumes, this is like having an external hard drive. So if you have a thumb drive, an SD card, or a solid state drive that maybe you plug into your computer but is external, and what you can do with a thumb drive or an external hard drive is just unplug it from your computer and go plug it into another computer at any time. And that's what it's like here having an extra EBS volume. So next, what I wanna jump into is snapshots. So what snapshots are, and those can be viewed right here under the Elasticstore volumes. A snapshot is an image of an EBS volume that can be stored as a backup of the volume or used to create a duplicate. A snapshot is not an active EBS volume. You cannot attach or detach a snapshot to an EC2 instance. However, to restore a snapshot, you need to create a new EBS volume using the snapshot as its template. So if I have an EBS volume and I create a snapshot, that is basically a duplicate or a replica that I can use as a backup to store. And at some point in the future, I can launch a new EBS volume and make and use the snapshot to populate the EBS volume with all the information that was on the original EBS volume. So the benefits of snapshots are to have a great resource for backups and having a snapshot because it is not a live active EBS volume is also a lot cheaper. Okay, so let's sum everything up with EBS. And when you think about EBS, again, just think of it as a hard drive. And with that, we will conclude this lesson. Thank you for watching. You may now move on.